Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Everyday Carry for the Everyday Guys. So today's video is going to be primarily about holsters. And if you like holsters, if you like hearing holster sounds, if you like seeing firearms get holstered, firstly, you're a bit weird. Secondly, I get it because I like it too. And thirdly, you're going to enjoy this video. I'm going to be looking at primarily holsters in South Africa. This one is from the US, so you're not going to see much of this guy. And what the video is kind of going to be about is how to choose a holster to suit not only your carry methodology but your body type so stay tuned for that but first there's a few important things i want to talk to you about uh discount codes knife competitions etc etc if you aren't interested in hearing that you can simply forward to this time below and the holster stuff will begin but if you are interested let's start off with a discount code so the guys at the knife guy sa they gave me this kernel blade I really do appreciate that this is one of the most awesome EDC blades I've ever come across full review in about a week or two's time give or take they've given me a 5% discount code on this for the month of March and pretty much all the kernel blade lines if you do purchase it and you enter the discount code which is EDC for the EDG or lowercase you'll see it down below here you'll get a 5% discount from the knife guy on any kernel blade gear obviously I will link everything in the video description below if you aren't sure how to get there, it'll be like a small downward arrow on your phone and on your PC. It'll have the show more sign and you'll see all that information. So 5% of these for the month of March. Also, we're going to do, be doing a 500 bucks uh, online giveaway from their store. I'm going to film that video immediately after this video and it'll be out on Tuesday. So the Tuesday after this video is when you'll see the details of how to win a 500 rand discount from the knife guy. They've got probably one of the most comprehensive blade lineups I've seen in the country. Pretty much all your exotics and all your local stuff, you're going to find their really, really cool store. Definitely check it out. Link is below. And then also the guys at SAEDC Reviews, J. Peter Blanche has given me a 10% discount on all his gear. So J. Peter Blanche does um canai backpacks like the one i reviewed a few weeks ago this camera is too close for me to get that backpack in the screen but i'll chuck in some beetle so that you can see what i'm talking about he does like canai magnum uh wiley uh, a whole lot of other stuff so he, so the 10 percent discount code is edg19 you can see it here that's all caps if you purchase from him and you enter that code you're gonna get 10% off anything you purchase as well as free shipping on anything over a thousand bucks so that's super cool and that's basically my way of say saying thank you to you guys for supporting the channel i don't make a single cent of this it's totally a discount for you guys i don't even think i'm allowed to use the discount i don't get the sales kick nothing like that it's literally me just saying thanks for supporting the channel guys i really appreciate it and this is a small way i can give back so stay tuned i'm going to try to get more discount codes on more things so definitely if this might be a good time to subscribe to the channel if you are in south africa especially because hopefully we can hook you up with some more things but let's now get into some holster talk so first off guys this firearm is empty and safe and the mags are empty and it will remain that way throughout the video so don't stress about that the first thing i want to talk to you about is a small safety thing this just came to my attention this past week where a guy sent me a picture of a holster where the tree guard area was not properly covered and Apparently the manufacturer said it was because of the light on the holster. He was carrying an Enforce APLC. So I want to state straight off the bat, I disagree with that. And let me explain why. So what we've got here is a holster from the guys at Edge Custom Carry, caters for PL Mini. When I slide the fire, I mean, what I'm talking about is this area over here. Okay. You should not be able to get a lot of anything inside that area over there. Now you can fit a hair in there or a thin piece of paper okay that's just the reality of it but you shouldn't be able to get like a finger in there or say an empty shell casing that kind of deal so i do understand this is quite a small light and so this isn't the same uh, profile as the aplc but if i switch to something bigger like the olight pl2 valkyrie if you get a properly designed holster this is the one from quantum carry and i slide that in i'm trying to get my, the best shot here i can still only get about that much of my finger in there i don't know how much you can see but i can't get anything further so there is a bit more of a gap in here i will be honest but it should not ever be more than this and so basically the way this is designed is because there's a gap here this comes up a bit higher and that is why you can't get anything more than like the very edge of your finger you should never be able to get your finger far enough in there that you can touch your trigger that's a very important thing and a lot of guys are still missing it have a look at this 
This is a holster from Snipe again. I actually did a full review on this holster and I missed this myself. Okay, so firstly, I am human. Secondly, I apologize for that, but even I missed this. So this holster has this sort of paracord webbing. It caters for the Olight PL Mini and I can get my finger deep enough in there that it's now touching the trigger. Okay, that is something you need to have a look at if you are going to order yourself a holster. Ideally, you want to have as little space as possible for things to fit into there and I'm going to go into that could be a bit too much space. And I feel you are well within your rights to ask your manufacturer if they could please adjust that either by softening the kydex and molding it closer to the trigger or whatever it is. I'm not a holster manufacturer, but you ideally want to be able to get very little, or almost nothing inside the trigger guard area of your firearm. That is going to vary from light to light, but it is something you want to maintain. And that's just basically good, good safety. Most of your accidental discharges are going to happen when reholstering. So protect yourself there. Guys, another thing I don't like and you should guard against is collapsibility. So your Kydex holster should be able to withstand a reasonable amount of pressure so that it doesn't collapse when you unholster your firearm. Remember, most accidental dis discharges happen when reholstering. So reholster carefully. But for example, that is why I did not do a review on one of these. So this is one of those minimalist holsters. I understand a lot of people are carrying this and they're carrying it with a lot of success. Don't go and sell or, or chuck away your minimalist holster. This is a personal opinion from myself. This is not basically me telling you all these holsters are crap. This is just me saying I'm not a particular fan of these simply because they collapse quite easily. So this is basically the configuration and if you go to unholster it should effectively maintain that shape but if you've got a tight belt it may collapse and now when you go to reholster you fiddle a bit until you find the proper amount of force to force that in there. I'm not saying that you are going to have an error, I'm simply saying that that little bit of fiddlation is what could cause a problem in where you put your finger etc etc especially if you are at the range practicing ah when i go to the range i practice with the configuration that i carry i very rarely switch things out okay if i want to have fun i'll switch to like an outside the weight a waistband position or if i'm testing things i'll try it at different holes that sort of thing but when i go for my own personal training and practice i carry the gear i carry on a daily basis and i'm not a big fan of these simply because of the fact that they do collapse now this now the trigger guard area doesn't collapse but this top piece does collapse and so yeah it's kind of like a middle ground and i'm not saying there's a bad holster so please don't destroy me in the comments it's just a personal um sort of opinion on these i just don't like how they don't retain their shape in a way i would like a horse to retain to retain the shape but that's that that's my own personal opinion also, with the appendix mission, they don't really have a claw, so for me, they don't offer a high level of concealment either. So, again, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of this type of holster for that reason. Okay, guys, so the second thing I want to talk to you about is holster size. Now, this video is primarily for appendix carry because that's the carry methodology I use. Contrary to popular belief, those guys who have a lot of uh, frontal investments, okay, they want a bigger holster rather than a smaller holster. The simple physics of it is, if you have a holster this size, okay, it's able to spread the pressure of carrying a firearm tightly tucked into your waistband over a larger surface area than if you have a holster this size. So you're going to feel a lot more pressure pressed into your body on a smaller holster than you are a bigger holster. Now for the guys who've got a bit of an athletic build, that's not going to be an issue. I can pretty much wear a, a smaller holster as I want to and it's not a problem for me. But if you are bigger, because your stomach is going to sort of envelop that holster, the more inward pressure there is because of how small it is. Remember, the smaller the surface area, the greater the intensity of the pressure, the more uncomfortable it's going to be. So contrary to popular belief, a bigger guy would more comfortably carry a bigger holster in the appendix position than they would a smaller holster. Now, as a side point to that, a lot of holsters today are coming out with this bendability situation going on, okay? If you're gonna go for one of these, you're gonna have to have your carry gear right. And what I mean by this belt and pants, etc., etc., because it's going to rely on your belt to bend this holster into shape. If you don't have a proper gun belt and you aren't carrying it correctly, you're not going to get a good level of concealment and you're going to get a lot of uncomfortability. So to negate that, what also manufacturers have started doing is 
implementing their own bendability and so this is the edge custom carry rambler and when you wear this in the the inside the waistband or appendix inside the waistband configuration this sort of sits on top of you like this and i'll just move it to the side you get a curvature okay that is a, like a non-adjustable you can adjust it slightly by moving this to the bottom or to the top but this holster has its own built-in uh, bend or curve so that kind of helps you achieve a degree of comfortability and concealability by implementing its own bend and you do want quite an aggressive bend for example my last line of defense associate v2 holster you can see this guy is a, an extremely aggressive bend and this is kind of comfortable for all guys because it's so well designed and because that bend in here is like just about perfect big guys or small guys are able to carry this and conceal and be comfortable all in while this is a really really good holster not available in south africa unfortunately so we're going to push this aside i just wanted to use it for that example that perfect curve which helps with concealability and comfortability and so sort of on the opposite end of the spectrum like i said you got one of these chameleons there's also for the olight pl mini now this for me conceals really really well very comfortable but Bigger guys who have given this to have said it's a bit uncomfortable because it's a small holster, right? And the, the claw is quite aggressive. It tucks in quite a lot. It is a bit uncomfortable for bigger guys. And, and I have sort of gotten emails from people saying, why does it work so well for me and not for them? Remember, body shape is very, very important in terms of how comfortable a holster is going to be. I have gotten a lot of guys say this guy is quite uncomfortable. This is the new chameleon. Now, normally it comes with a wedge at the back. I've removed that wedge just to test a few things and I forgot to put it back on. So this guy is very small. The wedge basically presses the holster into your body in that would lead direction as well as a claw. This thing tucks in a lot. So if you've got a bit of a belly, you are going to experience a degree of uncomfortability when carrying this holster. A good example for the guys who are a bit smaller is if you're carrying a holster and you lean forward, your belly sort of presses up against the holster. That's what bigger guys are going to feel quite often with this kind of holster. So guys, on the opposite end of the spectrum for the bigger guys, you have to understand if your holster is this long, you're going to experience a bit less um, inward pressure against your belly, but you might have some sort of chafing around this area, especially when you bend your legs because this is quite long, so it doesn't fit into that little cavity that God designed holsters to fit into. As you can see again on my last line of defense holster, this area over here and this area over here are sort of there so your legs can bend without too much impact on the holster. So that's kind of also something you want to look out for when purchasing a holster. You don't want it to be too long at the bottom. So guys, the next thing I want to talk to you about are claws. What do they do? Do we want them? And how can we avoid them if possible? So a claw does two things, okay? Your belt will sort of run up against this area over here. And as you tighten it, it'll pull the holster into your body. Now, notice I said the holster, not the fire. This entire holster is going to get twisted into your body. So while it's also going to twist the grip of the firearm into your body, you are going to experience a little bit more discomfort, especially if you're a bigger guy again, with a holster like this when it's twisted into your body. If you're a smaller guy like myself, you're not going to have a problem. And I'm sort of trying to cover all ends of the spectrum here so that everyone who watches this knows what to look out for when they buy a holster. But even I've made the mistake in the past in saying that the, the claw talks the grip into your body. It talks the whole holster into your body. So that's something important to understand. Now for the appendix carry position, can you avoid a claw? You can, but your concealment is going to suffer. And the only way you can avoid a claw is by having a holster that is curved. So if you look at this holster over here, this is a completely flat holster. And if you were to run this guy, this end over here, would poke out a bit so you're going to have a affected concealment with this in the appendix position now if i switch to a different holster like the edge custom carry rambler as you can see this is a curved holster so it does assist with concealment so even though this doesn't have a claw it can be worn in the appendix position it's not going to conceal as well as a holster that does have a claw but you are going to get a reasonable level of concealment because of the curvature of the holster. What that curve does is it curves the firearm so your belt will run sort of over the holster like this and the firearm is slightly curved into your body. As I said, not as good concealment as if it had a claw on it, but you are able to get acceptable concealment. And this will be more 
comfortable than wearing a holster with a claw. Now, when I review my holsters, I say they are comfortable because they are comfortable to me, but then again, I've got sort of the ideal body shape for appendix carry. So when I say 10 out of 10 comfortability, what I'm saying is this is comfortable considering I'm carrying a holster. And remember, carrying a holster is an inherently uncomfortable thing. They shouldn't be uncomfortable to the point where you can't live with it, but don't ever expect carrying a holster to be as comfortable as not carrying a holster. So guys, further to things like concealment devices like claws are also wedges. Now this is the Quantum Carry Chameleon V2. I did the launch um, and advertising for this last year for Black Friday. It comes with a wedge that I removed and I completely forgot to bring it along with me. So this wedge, check out the video, it's in the video description below. This wedge would sit over here and what it does is it goes against your body and talks the holster into your body. Now I want to warn you, okay, if you are already experiencing discomfort with your appendix carry holster because of the amount of inward pressure, this is going to maximize that. This thing is going to be tucked into your body incredibly aggressively. Now, what that means is you get an incredibly high level of concealment, but sort of the tipping point between comfortable and very uncomfortable with one of these is very, very, very small. So you've got to sort of purchase one of these with the idea in mind that it's going to be tucked into your body very aggressively. So guys, point number three or four, I'm hoping, I'm supposed to only have three, but I may be on point number four already. So sorry about that, my counting system isn't working very well. What I want to talk about is modularity. So a lot of holsters these days come with like things that you can attach to it in a sort of that configuration and take it apart if you don't want it. It's kind of cool, but it does come with some drawbacks. For example, modular holsters are always going to be big. Okay, because you've got to use two separate pieces of kydex in order to achieve that modularity. So if you look at any of these holsters, so for example, this holster here from Shinobi Kydex that I am still going to do a review on. If you compare this to my holster from Last Line of Defense, this case is for just a firearm in its current configuration and it's pretty much the same size as the LLOD holster. So if you are a smaller guy like myself or you've got an athletic build and you want a smaller holster, then going for one of these modular holsters, you are going to struggle because in order to achieve modularity, they've got to put a row of holes down this side and a row of holes down that side. So you're going to attach different things to it and it's just going to be quite a big setup. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, big setups aren't ideal for smaller guys simply because we can get away with carrying a smaller setup and have it still be comfortable. From a comfortability point of view for myself, the less gear I have inside my pants, the better. I'm, I'm happy with a very small holster because I don't have um, that big belly to basically be pressing up against the holster. So I want to carry the smallest possible holster I can get my hands on. And I know this is really a conundrum. You know, on the one end, I'm saying the bigger holster is comfortable. On the other end, I'm saying the small holster is comfortable. And what this comes down to, guys, is you've got to find the holster that's comfortable for yourself. A lot of guys ask me what holster should I get, etc, etc. And I hope this video can help you with that. If you are a small guy, you can get away with a small holster. If you're a bigger guy, you're going to want a bigger holster for the reasons I explained earlier. A folded Kydex holster such as this one over here is really cool. This is the, obviously the one from Quantum Carry. And these are really cool. They're often quite small, um, which is good for guys like myself. But what you lose out on is you will almost never have the opportunity to carry a spare mag in the holster itself with a folded piece of kydex. It's just not uh, mechanically possible. So you've got to look at that as well. If you're going to be carrying a holster and you want a spare mag, you're going to have to buy a spare mag carrier and carry it somewhere else on your body if you're going to go for folded kydex. So all kinds of holsters have advantages and disadvantages. And what I hope you pick from these three or four points are the ones that suit your body and your needs and look for a holster that matches that. Because at the end of the day, I can do a million holster reviews, but those are only reviews based on how I feel with them on my body. What I'm trying to do is outline certain things that everybody can look at and say, well, that suits me, that doesn't suit me, that suits me, that doesn't suit me, and draw up a conclusion and then go and find a holster that matches what they're looking for. I know this video is a bit long. I do apologize, guys. We are going to be back soon with some flashlight reviews from Manka, Olight, and Immolent. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good week. Cheers. God bless.